G'day guys, how you doing? So I'm out here at this uh, top secret um, testing facility. Um, it's not really, it's just a uh, just a dark dark zone, um, not too far away from where I live. And uh, tonight we're gonna be testing out the 14 to 30 F4S lens with the Nikon Z7. Now I'm really keen to see how this lens performs for astrophotography. Uh, I mostly have this lens for my landscape stuff, but seeing that we've got a nice clear sky, um, I've taken the opportunity to uh, go out there and see what happens with this lens. Now being an f4 lens it's probably not the um, go-to lens uh, that you'd want to maybe shoot Astro with. However, tonight's test, we'll see how good it just performs. Um, I'm going to shoot a few exposures, uh, the usual 14mm 30 seconds f4, ISO 6400, just to see what we get. And then I'm going to turn the tracker on and we're going to do some longer exposures at lower ISOs. Now, um, one of the things I really want to see about see with this uh, lens here is how it performs um, corner to corner with stars. Now with the tracker on, I don't have the best polar alignment, so we may get a little bit of trailing there. But our shorter exposures are going to um, really tell, a, tell the story of how well this uh, lens here performs corner to corner, wide open at f4. Um, with all that being said, I think it's time to uh, put the uh, put the lens on the uh, on the old Z7 there and uh, get shooting. ready to shoot our first shot it's going to be a 30 second exposure f4 at ISO 6400 and we're going to see how that turns out now I did set up my tracker a bit high but uh, oh well things happen so uh, here we go So we've just finished our uh, first exposure. We've uh, shot this image here at um, 14 millimeters, uh, 30 seconds, F4, ISO 6400. Now I'm just gonna uh, bring the uh, little flippy screen down a little bit just to make things a bit easier um, for me just to have a bit of a look in the back of the screen. And zooming in um, on this exposure, I can see that the uh, stars in the corner of the frame are actually really, really good. A um, little bit, a uh, little bit of trailing uh, from the uh, 30 second exposure. However, um, compared to a lot of other uh, lenses, wide open at f4, it's, it's quite good. Now, obviously, the uh, larger the aperture, um, the more issues we may encounter. Um, but just looking at this, uh, it, it does, it, it looks really, really good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, just take another image here at um, 30 mil, and I'm gonna just uh, quickly refocus. All right, now I think I've uh, pretty much got my focus there. Just gonna take this uh, image, I'm gonna reduce the exposure, seeing we're shooting at um, 30 millimeters, down to about, 13 seconds and we'll just take this shot right now and see how that turns out okay so that's just finished uh, that exposure there so let's have a look at it now 13 seconds ISO 6400 um, f4 again these stars are looking really really good I'm um, I'm thoroughly actually impressed uh, with this lens here. It's 
sorry i'm just concentrating a little bit but um yeah that's that that's really really good so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to uh point the uh um, camera right above us try and frame the milky way turn on the tracker and we'll do a, a couple of minute exposures and check that out all right so i've got the core of the milky way in frame i'm shooting at 14 millimeters I've got an iso of 1600 and again i'm shooting at f4 um, with a longer exposure lower iso i'm hoping that we can um, get to see just how good those uh, stars are across the whole frame all right so uh just about ready to go so i'm just going to quickly uh, turn this light off and we'll do about a two minute exposure and have a look at it after that so we've just finished our uh, exposure it's about 130 odd seconds and uh, i'm just going to go have a bit of a look at it and see how it's turned out now i don't think these guys can really see it that well but don't worry i'll show up the images um throughout the uh, the end of this video but what i can see it looks really good for a uh, a very quick polar alignment um zooming in i can just see how sharp this uh this lens in lens is sorry it's uh it looks really really good um i'm seeing a lot of a lot of the uh nice details you get in the core of the uh the Milky way there um but really we're wanting to see the performance of this lens you know with the stars and everything across the whole frame so let's have a look at these corners and there's a little bit of trailing um i guess but just looking at the stars they just look brilliant there is a slight bit of coma i'd say no chromatic aberration whatsoever um but it's very hard to tell if it's uh, my tracking that's the issue or um, if it's just got a slight, slight bit of coma uh, in the image. But, I mean, really, uh, for a uh, really wide-angled lens that's so small, compact, um, to be easily managed on a little tracker like this, um, yeah, you gotta be you got to be happy with it. Uh, now the other thing is um, for nightscape photography, I wouldn't exactly recommend uh, this lens if you're uh, if you just like to go take those uh, just single shot images. Um, however, I can see this lens working if you're going to um, do two separate images, one for your foreground and um, one for your night sky. Now the night sky at f4 is completely manageable. I mean you will um, you'll get uh, um, nice details there purely because the night sky is a lot brighter than the uh, your foreground okay um, as for your foreground you might have to shoot maybe a, a three minute exposure four minute exposure to be able to capture enough light um, to give you a, a nice decent exposure in camera and then blend those two images um, together straight after it's one of the techniques I use uh, for some of my nightscape images um, I shoot my uh, shoot a longer exposure lower ISO for my foreground and then I shoot a um, straight after that a high uh, ISO image for the um, uh, stars so there are ways to make this uh, this lens here work um, if you like to shoot landscapes as well as um, a bit of astro but uh, as for its actual performance you know um, stars across the whole frame of the uh, of the image it's really really good and i'd have to say it's actually better than the uh 14 to 24 um 2.8 but we do know that the 2.8 is a larger aperture it's got a larger uh front element lens on it so it will be interesting to see what happens um you know next year i think it is or uh, maybe it's the year after where the uh 14 to 24 um 2.8 for the uh z mount um gets released and compare those images and see how they look but uh yeah great lens and uh, and i do apologize if this video is a little bit rushed um i've uh, i've had a very very busy day and tomorrow i've actually got to get up early and uh, and take a group of people um for a nice four and a half hour drive um and spend uh, the weekend um photographing so i'm looking forward to that but uh, if you have any questions at all 
um, regarding this video, maybe some of the things that you'd like to see um, uh, reviewed um, with this lens in maybe another video, or uh, I've got a 50mm 1.8S on its way, so um, that will be the next uh, um, video to make to see how the 50mm 1.8S goes corner to corner at 1.8, and uh, I'm pretty sure that's going to be a really, really good lens. So uh, yeah, if you like this video, please guys subscribe. Um, I've got uh, some pretty cool things happening in the future. And, uh, and yeah, leave a comment, hit that like button. And until next time, take it easy guys. See ya.